September is known for many things, but it's also Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. It's a very common form of cancer, but a lot of people get uh, put off getting screened for it. We want you to know the risks and what you need to do, and that's why we have Dr. Lester Borden with us. He's the Prostate Cancer Medical Director at Cone Health's Cancer Center. So we're going to be discussing who needs to get screened and when. He's also talking about risk factors that you need to know about. All right, so let's first and foremost, let's start off with something, you know, really easy here, like just how common is prostate cancer? It's probably a whole lot more common than most of us at home think it is. Sure. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on today. Um, so prostate cancer is the most common cancer in men with over 260,000 men diagnosed per year. It's also the second leading cause of cancer death in men with about 35,000 men expected to die from prostate cancer this year alone. That being said, as long as it's diagnosed in early stage, prostate cancer is very treatable and highly curable. All right, so you just heard him tell you that it is one of the highest rates for cancer deaths, right? But you also heard him say that it is one of the most preventable. So let's talk about that. What risk factors increase a man's risk of prostate cancer? Sure, well, like most cancers, prostate cancer is more common as men age. About one out of eight men will be diagnosed in their lifetime, which is very similar to what we see in, in breast cancer in women. Uh, but there are certain men who are at a higher risk, and this would include any man with a first degree relative, such as a father, brother, or uncle who has had prostate cancer, as well as black men who may not only have a higher risk of prostate cancer, but also are potentially at a higher risk for more aggressive prostate cancer. All right, so let's go through the signs and the symptoms of prostate cancer that men and really the women in their lives should be aware of. Sure, so one of the main problems with prostate cancer is that it doesn't really cause any symptoms until it's already reached a pretty advanced stage and is usually beyond cure at that point. And so because of this, men have been screened with a blood test called PSA or prostate specific antigen. This is a protein made by the prostate. And this test can help detect prostate cancer at an earlier stage before symptoms develop and when it is still curable. And while we know this test can lower the risk of dying of prostate cancer for many men, the other problem with prostate cancer is that some of these cancers are pretty slow growing and really may not be life-threatening, especially for men who may be older with shorter life expectancies. So one of the concerns about PSA screening has been that men with these non-aggressive cancers could be potentially overdiagnosed and overtreated if the PSA test is used indiscriminately on everyone. And that's what used to be done in this country. And this has led to some controversy about who really should undergo the PSA test. It's resulted in confusion for both patients and also primary care doctors. And ultimately, it's led to a lot of inconsistency among different primary care providers and how they approach prostate cancer screening. Fortunately, we now have much better information to guide us, and the data is now fairly consistent about who should and who should not undergo routine PSA screening. Okay, so then let's talk about that. When do men need to get screened? And then when should they start having that conversation with their provider? Sure. Well, because of what we just discussed, understand that prostate cancer can be slow growing in many men. The men who are going to receive the, the most benefit are obviously going to be those who have longer life expectancies. So it's now pretty clear that if a man's going to live less than 10 years, they receive pretty minimal to no benefit from routine screening. So this would include most men over age 75, men who might be younger but might have other serious medical conditions that would limit their lifespan. On the other hand, men who are at a high risk for prostate cancer likely should start being screened even in their 40s. And this would include, again, black men men with a family history of prostate cancer, such as a father, brother, or uncle. And then for those men who are at an average risk, who really have no risk factors, but are expected to live at least 10 years, there certainly is a potential benefit to undergo PSA screening. And these men just need, uh, just need to become educated about prostate cancer screening. And through a shared decision process with their medical provider, they can decide if it's right for them. And that discussion for these men at average risk would typically begin around age 50 to 55. Okay. All right, and that's something that too, I think of as a wife, I think to myself, I'm wanting to make sure that I'm part of the discussion as well, because it's kind of true that like the women kind of lead the men to go to the doctor. We see it all the time, <laughs> yeah. absolutely agree. All right, when we come back, we're going to discuss possible warning signs for prostate cancer. We're gonna debunk some misconceptions as well, and that's coming up right after the break. We are back with Dr. Lester Borden, the Prostate Cancer Medical Director at Cone Health, and we've been discussing the disease and what you need to know about it. Um, in the last segment, you mentioned PSA screening for prostate cancer. Does an elevated PSA always mean that the man has cancer? 
So no, not necessarily. An elevated PSA um, simply means that uh, a man may be at a higher risk for prostate cancer and it should prompt them to undergo further testing or evaluation by a specialist at that point. But there can be other reasons to have an elevated PSA that don't always mean cancer. Okay, now there's no way to prevent the disease, but are there steps that men can take right now to reduce their risk for prostate cancer? Yeah, well, I typically tell patients that a heart lifestyle is also a prostate healthy lifestyle. And so there's no one thing that men can necessarily do to prevent prostate cancer, but they certainly may improve their chances by eating a heart healthy diet, regular exercise, limiting or avoiding tobacco and alcohol use and maintaining an appropriate body weight. Many of the things that we all need are, or all know to do and need to be doing better anyways. General good health there. Okay. Absolutely. All right, so some men put off going to the doctor. We kind of touched on that too in the last segment. How concerning is that when it comes to getting screened for prostate cancer? Right, well, as we discussed earlier, prostate cancer will typically cause absolutely no symptoms until it's already reached an incurable stage. So I would highly recommend men getting their routine preventative health screenings by their primary care provider to avoid missing a prostate cancer at a time when it still may be curable. So listen to your wives. <laughs> Good advice, all right. What well, popular misconceptions are out there about this disease? Yeah, I think many men have gotten a little bit of a mixed message about prostate cancer over the years um, with men sometimes hearing that it's often not life-threatening at all. And then sometimes the next day hearing that it's lethal and the second leading cause of cancer death. And this seems like a paradox, but in fact, they're both right. We now understand not all prostate cancers are the same. And probably maybe the biggest change over the past couple of decades in managing prostate cancer has been that we can now really differentiate between, between those aggressive and non-aggressive types of prostate cancer. And so this has allowed us now to truly personalize care for each individual man to suit their particular situation. So while many men may require aggressive treatment, such as surgery or radiation for their cancers, for most of the non-aggressive prostate cancers, we now recommend something called active surveillance or a process basically of monitoring their cancer rather than aggressive treatment that may cause them side effects. So truly moving toward more personalized medicine. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes a lot of people don't go to the doctor because they're like, I just don't wanna to have to pay that doctor bill or I don't have insurance or I've got a gap in insurance right now. Cone Health Cancer Center has several free screenings coming up. Let's talk about who is eligible and then how do they sign up? Yeah, so we've created an early detection prostate cancer program through the Cancer Center at Cone Health, and this is for men ages 45 to 69 in the community who either don't have a regular physician or have not had the opportunity to undergo prostate cancer screening through their primary care provider, but are interested in possibly doing so. And what we do is provide education about prostate cancer screening there, and then followed by a PSA blood test if a man chooses to proceed. And if interested, you can call 336 8320849 to register and these are typically running all through September sometimes even into October. All right, and if you didn't get that number, we're going to put it in the web story, but um, I'm sure when you call Cone Health as well when you say I'm looking for that free screening, they'll direct you to the right spot. All right, we've got about 1 minute left. What final message do you want uh, to tell folks about prostate cancer? Sure, I, I think it's just important that men become as educated as they can about prostate cancer. I mean, it's certainly a very serious issue for many men, but they shouldn't be fearful of it. And with routine health checkups, appropriate counseling, most men will be diagnosed at an early stage where the impact of their cancer in their life really can be minimized. And we're really quite fortunate in Greensboro to have some very highly trained prostate cancer uh, physicians, some of the most up-to-date technology for both diagnosing and treating prostate cancer. So for those men who will need treatment, they should really feel better that some of the best technology and experience for treating prostate cancer is right here in their own community. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to travel for it. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Uh, we don't want you to miss any of this information here in a few minutes. We're going to have everything that we just went over on our website. Just head over to the To Your Wellbeing section.